everybody, it's Lon Seiben, and we're taking a look at another network attached storage array. This time, Synology sent us this new one that they've come out with called the DS214SE. And this is a dual drive NAS. And again, it's a NAS, so that means you cannot plug it directly into your computer, but you'll plug it into your network with its gigabit Ethernet port here. Uh, this particular model has two two terabyte drives on board for a total of four terabytes if you run it in that scary RAID, RAID 0. Uh, you can also mirror the drives as well and uh, have some internal redundancy. Uh, they also give you USB ports on board so you can plug in external drives for backup. Uh, these are USB 2.0 uh, ports, so they're a little bit slower than some of the other products we looked at, but you know, if you're doing backup or, or that sort of thing, it should uh, be totally fine. Uh, you can also plug a printer into these for print serving, or you could plug in a Wi-Fi adapter and get it uh, into wireless mode. Uh, you have to bring that adapter and make sure that it's compatible with it. So um, they do make it easy to change out the drives, relatively speaking. You can just pop the hood here. Um, you can unscrew the drives and put in new ones. It'll support up to uh, two four terabyte drives at the moment. So uh, if you have uh, larger drives, you can put those in and uh, configure it to your heart's content. Uh, they are screwed in, so it's a little bit of work to get the drives out, but you can do that. Uh, it looks like uh, this particular model, this is the four terabyte model, which is of course uh, spanned across two two terabyte drives. Uh, they included the uh, WD green drives uh, with that. So those are the lower cost drives. So we're going to put this back together and we are going to go take a look at the operating system of this device because it is really impressive. And this does a lot of what you've been asking about on some of those other products that we looked at, like the MyCloud and the Seagate drive. Um, it can sync across the network, both locally and over the internet. It can work as like a Dropbox kind of thing where it syncs files up to your local file system in addition to the drive itself. Um, it's got a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, of robust options. And we're going to do like the top level, and then you'll ask me some questions, and we'll come back and do some follow-up videos. So let's boot this up and see what's going on inside. Now the drive is configured via a web-based control panel, and it is a really nice web-based control panel. As you can see here, it's running in Chrome, but it really mirrors like a graphical user interface that you'd see on any operating system. And it's, uh, you can move the windows around. It's really very fast and snappy and responsive. Um, you have a couple of options right off the bat here, so you could browse the file system on the drive. You can upload and download files through this web interface, which is really nice. Um, you also have the ability, of course, to connect to it like any other network drive in your, on your network. So you can see here it's on my local network. It pops right up, and I can uh, access all of my folders through my operating system, whether it's the Mac or Windows. So that's pretty handy there. Um, the first thing you want to do before you do anything else is check for updates. And there, there might be a little notification up in the corner here that you'll see. Uh, but also check over here just in case. And the reason is, is that uh, th this drive uh, is running full open source uh, software and, and packages, and you want to make sure that you get it updated to get around that Heartbleed bug that's been affecting all the open SSL stuff out there. So uh, that patch is available. You want to get that on here as soon as you can just to make sure that you're not vulnerable to uh, that, especially if you're doing external access to the drive. So that's the, the first thing to do. The second thing to do is to go into your user control panel here and change the uh, password for the administrator because that will be blank by default. And one thing to keep in mind is that you really want to have this drive uh, centered somewhere very secure that won't have access to a lot of unauthorized people because if they just stick a pin in the reset switch in the back here, uh, it'll wipe out the administrator password and let anyone get in without a password, at least anyone that's got access uh, to your local network. So um, I would really secure this thing somewhere where uh, people really can't get at it. Um, so you do that, and again, this, this is a lot of depth to it, and it's going to take a while uh, to really figure out all the ins and outs of this because you could spend hours just configuring things. But you know, some of the simpler things to do would be to build some users, um, go in and try to figure out exactly what you want them to have access to. So uh, here's my account. You can assign them to different groups. I can decide which folders they have access to, and you can do read-only or read-write or no access. So a lot of the, the features you've seen on some of the other NAS drives, you can set quotas for um, the amount of uh, space that they can use on that drive and also grant different applications. I'm going to show you the applications in a few minutes because there's a lot of stuff to choose from in that regard as well. Um, it, just a couple of items of note before we move on uh, is the quick connect function. So you can give your drive an easy to remember name and then it'll register itself with a Synology server so you can very easily pop open a, one of their apps on the iPhone or Android or even on your desktop computer if you want to find a way to get to the drive quickly when you're off-site. Uh, you can do that and it'll uh, route through your UPnP router with it's a very simple to remember name here. So for example, like Lon Reviews Tech, we could just type that into our iPhone and get 
uh, things working there. So really slick, although uh, there are more secure ways to do that as well. And they have a ton of options for uh, VPN and some other things, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that's that. There's a lot of uh, personalization, uh, task scheduling, cron jobs, you name it. Uh, this is a little full-blown Unix server, and they give you a lot of access to all of that. Um, but what I really want to show you is the package center. And this is where uh, you add features to the device. And, it, and think of it like an app store. But as far as I know right now, all the apps in here are free. And you can't beat that price. Um, and what you can do is you can add features through the package store. So DLNA server, um, I don't know, like backup functions, that sort of thing. Uh, you can just uh, install the apps, and you will be ready to go with those. So I've installed a couple of them here. And I'm going to show you how some of these work. Uh, the first one is the cloud station. And what this does is it allows the drive to work like Dropbox in that uh, you can keep files on your local file system. So if you're on a plane with no Wi-Fi, you can work on a file on here or put files in a folder. When you get back to a network connection, it will sync those files back to the drive and keep the local copy on the computer in sync with what's on the hard drive. This is great. I know a lot of you have been asking about that because it basically is a roll your own Dropbox in almost every way. It's the same exact functionality, at least as far as the syncing to the local computer goes. And that is really, really slick. And I think they've done a nice job on that. Now, in addition to syncing to your own equipment, you can also send the files simultaneously uh, to Dropbox and Google Drive through this app. So there's a lot of options for uh, getting your files synced and offsite. Um, you have a little download station here, which, which you can point um, all sorts of files at. Usenet, BitTorrent, FTP, you name it, you can download it through there. I think that's pretty neat. I haven't played with that yet. Um, DLNA Media Server, which speaks for itself. A lot of the other drives have that. Um, it's got a, a virtual Time Machine backup. And I say virtual in that it, it works just like Time Machine, except it's on the drive. And it will back up the files that you're storing to this drive uh, to an external device the same way Time Machine on the Mac does, which means that it'll keep revisions of those files every time it backs up. Uh, and develop a really nice strategy for uh, giving you multiple versions of files as you edit them. So you always have uh, a way to kind of backtrack as you go. Um, you have like the asterisk. I think this is the, uh, the, the little uh, phone system. Yeah, you can actually run your, your uh, PBX through this thing. Um, you know, audio station. A lot of the, the open source apps are available with one-click installs. Um, you can run WordPress on it. Uh, really cool. You've got a couple different options for backup. And one thing that I haven't installed yet, but I'm probably going to, uh, is the Glacier backup. And Amazon has like two storage capabilities. So they have the S3 service, which is fairly inexpensive. You can store as much as you want, and they charge you by the gigabyte. Um, it's not too expensive, but if you have a lot of data, it could really get up there. Um, Glacier is a slower restore process from Amazon, but it's also a lot cheaper. I think it's like a penny a gigabyte, or it, it's really, really cheap. And it's a great place just to have as like a really you know, super uh, safe backup that if everything else that you were backing up to fails, you can pull it down from Glacier and have it uh, come back to you over time. It takes a, about three hours or four hours to get the file after you request it. I think Amazon is writing these files to a disk or a tape somewhere and then uh, taking them offline. And they actually charge you a lot more for the restore. But like I look at it, it's kind of like the fire safe that if you, know, you lost every single backup you had, you know you have a safe copy on Amazon. It only costs you a buck or two a month to uh, back up most of your files, which is uh, pretty handy there. Um, a lot of multimedia options. There is an iTunes server, but again, like the other products we've looked at, um, it will only work with uh, iTunes running on a PC or a Mac. It won't work with the Apple TV or anything else like that. Uh, but that DLNA server will certainly work uh, with a lot of uh, things from uh, you know, Roku and other devices that support the DLNA standards. So. Just to show you how crazy some of the options are here, they even have a security surveillance system that'll work with IP cameras. And again, this is free. Um, so you have the surveillance station. And again, it comes with it, essentially. You can just uh, install it. We might take a look at this in a future episode. I have to see if uh, some of my cameras are compatible with it. So let's take a look at something pretty cool, which is that syncing feature. And that's called the cloud station. So we've got it installed. And the way you access the packages is through this little menu up in the top left-hand corner here. And again, really nice interface. So we're going to go over to cloud station. This is kind of the server application side of it. And um, it's enabled right now. And uh, what you can do with it is you can set up that Quick Connect ID that we talked about before. Uh, or you can set up your own VPN or do something to get connected to the drive. So it doesn't need to work through Synology servers. You can actually just develop your own scheme of directly connecting to the drive and be able to access it. And uh, pretty much what you do is uh, they have links directly to the apps that you can use. So you can download it for other disk stations. Um, it also works on mobile devices. So you can sync up every file you want in a folder directly to your iPhone or iPad. Um, it's really diff more difficult to write back because you, you can't like edit the file and save it. You have to edit the file, save it, and then move it back over on the iPhone, at least. But uh, you can actually store all of your files uh, locally on the drive and keep that 
uh, that app synced up with the Synology drive, which is pretty cool. There's also a kind of a, a, an app that pulls it out on demand as well, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and then, of course, you can click on uh, the computer option. Uh, it detects what computer you have. You can click the button here and download the client. All right, so I'm going to put together a quick little text file here that we're going to save to the local computer and have synced back to the drive. And then we're going to go to the drive, edit that text file, and sync it back. Hopefully, this will work. So uh, here we go. We've got our text file here. I'm going to save it. Now, where these folders go to, I think you can specify where you want it to go, but uh, this particular one uh, is located in my home directory. So if I, as you can see here, if I, it goes right off your home directory, a lot like Dropbox does, and we're going to call this test text file. And again, we're saving this locally, uh, but we're going to access it globally, in, so to speak. So you see we've written the file, we've got the notification that it has gone up to the cloud, and essentially it's written to the drive. And if we go to our Synology a web interface here, and I hit refresh, um, there's the file. So now we've got this file literally synced up in two different places. It's on the local file system here on my Mac, and it's also living on the cloud drive. So if I was connecting with an iPhone or any other device, I'm going to see that uh, both here, and then if I'm syncing with that cloud thing, it's also going to sync to all the other clients that are connected uh, to this drive as well. Now, if I go in and edit the file, which you, by the way, you can do through the web interface, which is really uber cool, uh, you can see we have that same exact text file here. I'm going to add a new line, and I'm going to then save this version, and we'll hit save, and we'll close it out. And in a second or two, it should sync back to our folder here. And there we go, we got the notification. And if we go back here and open it up locally on our Mac, you can see that it added the new line there. So um, again, it works much like Dropbox does. And I, am, I think this is probably the killer feature of this device because it really adds uh, essentially real cloud capability uh, to the device that uh, I haven't seen on one of these before. Now, another feature I found to be very useful is the VPN server. And again, this is a free installation within the App Store. And what this gives you is three different VPN server options that you can choose one or use all three if you want, depending on the uh, devices that you're trying to connect. So you basically uh, install this, and you've got a PPTP server, an open VPN server, and an L2TP IPsec server as well. Uh, they have some basic instructions for getting things set up. You do need to uh, give the, the drive a static IP on your local network and forward a port on your router to get it working. But I found the configuration, especially for OpenVPN, was very easy. Uh, you set up your IP range that you wish to assign because, again, you're going to uh, connect to this drive and give it a virtual uh, connection to your network on a different IP space. So you can set up, in my case, I set up this 10.8 network and allow five of these uh, connections to happen simultaneously. Um, I think five is the max, so you can't you know, in, in connect the whole world to it, but you can certainly connect enough to make it useful. And then once you have this set up, uh, you click Export Configuration, you change one line on a little, uh, little text file that's embedded in the folder that they give you, put it into your OpenVPN client, and connect. And you're off and running in, in a very secure way. Now, if you're into uh, having your own security certificates, there is a way to install your own uh, security certificates. But if you don't, uh, you'll be using Synology's security certificates. And you know, for really, you know, if you're not doing really heavy, crazy stuff, you know, that might be good enough for what you're looking to do. It's definitely more secure than that, that short name forwarding service that they offer. Um, you also have a log, so it'll tell you who's in there and when they came in. And it'll also give you an idea of who's connected to it right now. You can even drop people uh, while they're connected to the drive as well. So you have some uh, administrative capabilities here as well. So very, very cool. There are a bunch of apps available for both Android and iPhone. I'm just going to scroll through a couple of them here in the App Store on the iPhone. Uh, this one is DS Video. And apparently, and I, and I have to spend some more time on this, uh, the video package that's available on the store will even work with an HD Home Run and will serve as a DVR. So the hard drive can connect to an HD Home Run. We did a lot on the HD Home Run, so check out those series of videos for that. Uh, and apparently, you can use this as a video server. Uh, the app, in this particular instance, would connect with that package on the drive and allow you to watch video both on the iPhone and then toss it to an Apple TV as well. And I saw some options to even allow uh, passing uh, AC3 audio, you know, Dolby Digital Audio to it as well. So we're going to spend some more time with that in a future video, I think. Uh, there's also a uh, app here called DS File. And this is the one that I like a lot because what this one does is it just lets you browse the drive. So uh, you can pop into your drive. You can upload and download files. Um, for example, we can check out that text file that we worked on before. Uh, and there you go. You can actually see the whole thing. The scrolling gets a little bit messed up sometimes. But uh, you can do that. You can't really edit it because you'd have to pop it over to another app save it on the app, and then re-upload it. But you can uh, upload files from your phone. So you can uh, you know, basically toss uh, files that you download into the app, and then from the app, 
uh, upload to the drive. Uh, you can also uh, go in and uh, create new folders. You can even upload fo photos and other things that you have uh, on your phone as well. It doesn't, as far as I know, do an automatic photo syncing thing, but that would be kind of neat if it did. Um, but you can see how uh, this sort of works. So a pretty simple app there. Um, there's also an audio file, so you can index the music on the drive and connect to it that way. Uh, and the photo app that does a very similar thing. Um, there's also an administrative app too. So if you have a bunch of these on your network, this DS Finder uh, application will allow you to kind of monitor the status and health of those drives as you uh, look at them. And Synology has like a bunch of stuff in the enterprise, almost the enterprise level. They've got like eight bay drives and all this uh, really high-end stuff. And this will kind of keep an eye on all the Synology drives you have in your network. Um, this one is neat. This is called DS Cloud. And again, like the app that we showed on the desktop, uh, this will sync up files from the drive to the phone. So it'll actually download them onto the phone. It'll live inside the app on that phone, uh, but you can then toss those files over to other applications. Again, the, the limitation being that if you save the, uh, the file on the app that you tossed it to, you have to toss it back. Um, so it is a little bit cumbersome, and that's mostly because of the iOS operating system. So uh, you have that as well. And you can even manage that download app that I was showing earlier, the one that can handle the uh, BitTorrents and all the other stuff as well. So what about performance? So we were running a Blackmagic speed test right now, as a matter of fact, and we're getting you know anywhere from 50 megabytes or so of write. We sometimes pop as high as 60, and we're in the, uh, the 70s to low 90s megabytes per second. Uh, in reads. So very capable, probably not a video editing device per se, but uh, you might be able to do that, but you could really do a lot with you know, small fi file sharing and movies across your network and that sort of thing. So it performs uh, exceptionally well. Now we're in that RAID 0 mode, so we're getting a little bit better performance than we would get if we were running those drives mirrored for better redundancy, but um, you've got some really uh, decent performance there to make this work well as a file server you know, in a small office environment or in a home environment for sure. So I am really impressed with this. I think the, the key features that stand out for me uh, are that file syncing feature, the fact that you can sync to other uh, uh, versions of this, but also uh, sync to Glacier. You can sync to uh, another computer. You can sync to an iPhone or an iPad even. So uh, really, really uh, slick in how it uh, gives you some of those options. Um, I also like the fact that it has that VPN server built in as well, so you can really connect in a more secure fashion. And I think there's a lot more going on here that uh, we have yet to see. So I want to take your questions. So write in if you want to see something specific on the drive. And I think I might try over the weekend playing with that security camera feature. I'll try to get it working with uh, one of my D-Link cameras and see if it's compatible. So uh, overall, I have to say I would definitely recommend this drive. Um, you might even want to look at getting uh, the driveless version and get your own drives to put into it because uh, that's really pretty affordable. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.